Celiac disease is an interesting condition. It really is an inflammatory condition in response to exposure to gluten in the diet. Symptoms of celiac disease can vary from person to person. Some patients with celiac disease may not even know that they have it, and the condition is really detected on a routine blood test where a physician may notice that a vitamin D level is low, or there may be a slight increase in liver function tests. Patients can be asymptomatic, can be detected routinely, or patients may have some symptoms such as abdominal bloating or cramping or diarrhea, or they may notice that they just don't feel well when they may have certain kinds of meals such as pasta or bread, which is known to contain high amounts of gluten. One of the causes of celiac disease is thought to be a genetic predisposition in the, in the immune system. And some people may carry a specific gene that may allow exposure to gluten activate the immune system so that when gluten reaches the lining of the small intestine, an intense inflammatory reaction can occur that causes erosions within the GI tract that leads to eventual symptoms. Not everyone that has these genes and exposure to gluten may develop the signs of celiac disease, but some people will. One of the real reasons to test for celiac disease is that there are predispositions for certain kinds of cancers, such as lymphomas or small intestinal cancers. When a patient is diagnosed with celiac disease, one of the first steps is to have them see one of our nutritionists here at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Once a patient can understand where gluten is found in the diet and in the environment, they can begin that strict gluten-free diet. We also like to make sure that our patients with their gluten-free diet are still getting the vitamins and minerals that they need. And periodically, we will screen for certain deficiencies, such as vitamin D, iron, and so forth. I think one of the most important things to know about celiac disease is that if you have gastrointestinal symptoms and you're not quite sure why you have them, you should probably see your internist or your gastroenterologist to at least begin a screening process as to why you have these GI symptoms. It's very easy for someone to live with abdominal symptoms for a long time, thinking that everything is okay or adopting this new sort of you know, baseline in their GI function. But one shouldn't really do that. You should always seek the help of a healthcare provider in order to make sure that there's nothing else that's going on.